Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Happy feast day. Happy feast day. In the history of the monks of Syria, a very old writing, the story is told of this general who one day decides that he is going hunting. And of course he takes his horses and his weapons and his retinue and everything with him to go about hunting as he gets to the place where he is seeking his prey, an old elder stands out in front of him in the road. And he says to him, What are you doing here, Abba? The abbot replies to him and says, And what are you doing here? He says, Well, I am hunting. The elder says, I am hunting too. And the man says to him, the general, Well, why is it that you, what are you hunting? He says, I am pursuing God. I pursue him day and night. I am striving that I might see him, that I might seize him, and that I might lock him up in my heart. The general replies to those around him, This is a true ascetic. And that is our spiritual life, summed up in that man's life. A true ascetic is not someone who perhaps does great feats. Sometimes they do. Sometimes they fast and keep vigil tremendously. But a true ascetic is about one who everything in their life is aimed toward God, to the apprehension of the Holy Spirit. As St. Seraphim says, the goal of the spiritual life is to acquire the Holy Spirit. And this ascetic sought in everything he did to acquire that Holy Spirit. And that must be the way of our life. And that is what Pentecost is telling us. The Holy Spirit has been sent into the world from heaven. And we are to do everything we can to maintain that grace, to keep that purity in our hearts, to not quench the Spirit, to do everything possible not to lose the grace that we are given. Now, of course, the Holy Fathers teach us that we are given that Holy Spirit in Holy Baptism, as we saw on Monday with Chrissy, and as the others saw with Daniel yesterday on Saturday, the Holy Spirit was given in full. And if we have eyes to see, we would see them as newborn children, but beyond newborn children, with the uncreated light shining around them of God. And they've been given this great grace. It is not necessary that we need to envy them. What we need to do is maintain the state that they have been given, because we too have been given that state of the presence of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is irrevocably placed in our hearts, of course, until the judgment. We can do great things, of course, to darken that grace and things to block it out of our minds by our, by our distractions and by our sins and by our passions. We can cover it up with great layers of mud that it becomes difficult to find the Holy Spirit anymore, even though He's deep within there, waiting, waiting to reveal Himself. So the purpose of our Christian life is to maintain that baptismal grace. Baptism is not something that was just given to us at one point in our life as little children, or in this case as adults, but was given to us to believe in and remember every single day of our lives, because we must maintain that baptismal grace. The acquisition of the Holy Spirit that St. Seraphim talks about is not something that we gain after baptism. It is something that we increase after baptism, that we build up after baptism, our recognition of it. The fullness is given but we must add fire to fire and glory to glory and add as much spiritual gasoline as we can on that fire that it might flame up, that the world might see that it might be held under a bushel, but that the world might see Christ. Now this day is often by people called the birthday of the church. Well, that's not right. <laughs> Clearly not right. The Holy Fathers teach, as like Epiphanios of Cyprus says, that the church was created before the ages. Saint John of Damascus talks about the early prophets with the church. Gregory the Theologian talks about the church before and after Christ and that church which the prophets framed. And these are pretty strong voices. The, the church existed with the creation of the angels. So what is it we're seeing here? We're seeing the Holy Spirit come in His fullness. Yes, He was sustaining the world before that, but He came to ordain the apostles as bishops to give the holy missions to the church, to give us that fullness that we might be able to preach the word in truth, that we might be able to live the ascetic life, we might be able to live the way of the virtues, to attain the Beatitudes, which we had no strength for before, not the fullness of that strength. And why do we need this Holy Spirit? We hear the Lord himself saying to his apostles last week, unless I leave, the Holy Spirit will not become, will not come. This is an amazing word. 
He, the pre-incarnate of God, who became incarnate for our sakes, the divine Logos, the second person of the Holy Trinity, says, I have to leave that something more full might come, the fullness of the Holy Spirit, that I might send him to you. And unless I leave, you don't have that, the fullness of truth, the revelation of the Holy Spirit and the Trinity on this day that we celebrate. This is an amazing thing. In our lives, how do we see the Holy Spirit? Yes, we see it in the Holy Mysteries of the Church, in baptism, in the Eucharist, and many others. We see it, of course, in wonder-working events. We see it in the virtues. We see it when someone turns away from sin. But most clearly, we see it in the lives of the saints and all those who are pictured for us upon these walls and throughout the universe because the Holy Spirit manifests himself in the lives of God's people and the way they live. Now, as I've said many times, if you live as a saint in this day and age in particular, but not throughout any age, really, you'll be considered crazy because it is not the value of the world. The icon we have sitting on the altar of Saint Ephraim the Syrian says, no advantages does that offer those who love the old world. And that is indeed true. While the God, God created the world, while there are many beautiful things, those things have the purpose of guiding us into Christ. And only that. If they are for any other purpose that is not godly, then they are simply material and have lost their meaning. And they become a sacrilege because they have lost the presence of God. Now, St. Nikolai Vilamirovich says that the difference in a saint and a neurotic is that a saint has sanctity, has sanctification. What is his point in saying that? Because anybody who tries to live the gospel is going to be called crazy. I've experienced it. Probably many of you have experienced it. From family members, from friends, from people on the street you've never seen. What is it you're doing? It doesn't have to be that strict. Why do you have to follow it that strictly? You know, God will forgive you. But the reality is, for every idle word that comes out of your mouth, I will judge you. Take up your cross daily. <clears throat> he who loves father, brother, mother, sisters, wives, children, lands, houses more than me is not worthy of the kingdom of heaven. So the good things we've given in our lives, our families, all those things are good. Our houses, our wives, our children, the marriage that is about to be celebrated, these are good. But the purpose of that marriage is to guide the couple to Christ to bring them closer to God, to bring them to salvation together, that the crowns they are given might be offered up before God in the kingdom of heaven. And then instead of standing over their heads, they might be placed on their heads and rewarded for the life they lived in the gospel. It's been a long time since I served a marriage. Obviously, I'm a monastic, so I gave that task over to Father Peter. But as I always told people, it is the same life. The monastery life is being saved within a family a family of brothers or sisters, as it may be. The marital life is being saved within a family, with a husband or a wife and children, denying yourself before each other, just like in a monastery, praying together, just like in a monastery, keeping the fast together, just like in a monastery. The difference is the celibacy, and maybe the intensity, and maybe the, the hours you have for the prayer, with less distractions, honestly. The monastic life has many advantages, but the marital life does too. A love that is different than in the monastic life. But both of them should be aiming us to the love of God. So these saints that we have emulating, these so-called neurotics around the wall, and God willing, one day I will be called a neurotic. I know I am now, but that's because I'm neurotic, not because I'm a saint. There's a very big difference. So what we need to do is emulate these people. It is not good enough to say... Well, we didn't do that way up north, Father. We didn't do that way in Russia, Father. We didn't do that way in Greece, Father. We didn't do that way in my parish. I don't see those other people doing those things you're telling me to do. Foolish thinking. The right way of thinking is what do the saints do? What does the gospel say? Everything in our lives, the words that we use, the way that we dress, the way that we talk, the way that we eat, the way that we think, Everything, every single moment should be informed by the presence of the Holy Spirit. Because otherwise we cast off the Holy Spirit. This is a dangerous thing. Our life has to be a way of repentance. Each moment, each second, each hour, everything we do must breathe the life of God. So that the Holy Spirit today fill your hearts. 
We talk about the Pentecostal movement, the Pentecostal church. This is the Pentecostal movement. This is the Pentecostal church. The real Pentecostal church is here with the presence of the Holy Spirit, with the sobriety that comes from that presence of God, that humbling presence of God. And by receiving that Holy Spirit, we can go forth and do everything that the people on the walls did because they don't have gifts we don't have. We just haven't attained to them. We don't grasp them. We don't reach out and make them ours by denying ourselves and taking up our cross and following the gospel with each moment of our lives. But it's not because we can't, because the fullness of the strength was given to us in our holy baptisms and offered to us daily in our repentance. That presence is not gone from us. If you don't feel zeal today, that doesn't mean you can't by the end of this service or in the next moment. And the Holy Spirit comes when the Holy Spirit comes. It's always His gift. But we make our hearts ready for Him. So I say, come Holy Spirit. Come upon all of us. Come upon me. Come upon each of you. Come upon the about-to-be-wedded couple this afternoon. And fill their lives up with your presence. And their family up with your presence. And bring them into the kingdom of heaven. And maybe with them, bring me to the edge of the kingdom of heaven. Grasping onto their feet, because they're certainly better than I. May God bless us with this Feast of Pentecost. Encourage us and strengthen us from today, from this millisecond, to become saints. Because He calls us all to be saints. Now let us attain it. Amen. Amen.